Howdy, this here's Paul, and we're going to have us another little Sunday school lesson. I say little, but really and truly, this lesson sets the foundation for our faith. So, uh, although I say it's little, it's, it's monumentous. So, the name of today's lesson is A Promise Received by Faith, and this is the Easter lesson. And our text is going to be out of Romans 4, 18 through 25. And then I'm going to go back to Luke 24 and, and read and, and verses 1 through 9. Now the related scriptures for this are Hebrews 11, 11 and 12, and then to verse 19, Romans 4, 13 through 6, John 2, 13 through 22, in Luke 18, 31 through 34. And uh, I'm going to pray and I'm going to read the scripture. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do this lesson justice. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. And Lord God, we thank you for your, uh, you know, your, uh, you didn't hold nothing back. You give us your son. Uh, we thank you for your sacrifice, Lord. But more than that, we thank you for your resurrection. We're guaranteed, uh, you know, our faith is in in the fact that what happened. Lord God, we just pray today that this word falls on good ground. We pray somebody picks it up and takes it to heart, Lord God. We just pray more souls come to the kingdom. We know time is short, Lord, but... Uh, we know that the work ain't finished, and we're gonna continue. We're gonna to continue to seed time and harvest in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right, I'm gonna start with uh, Romans 4:18 through uh, 25, and then I'll read Luke 24:1 through 9. All right, here we go. Romans 4, starting in verse 18. Abraham against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith given glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but for us also to him it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Now I'm going to read Luke 24, 1 through 9. Now upon the first day of the week, very in the morning, excuse me, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered it and found not the body of Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of the sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the leaven and to all the rest. You know, Abraham... God told Abraham to leave the land of his fathers in the, you know, Ur of the Chaldees. Told him to lie it out and go where he told him. Now, 
Abraham come from a family of uh, idol makers. So you think from faith, he just walked out. That's what we got to do. We just got to walk out in faith. We just have to believe what God said. Abraham left his hometown and ventured out unto the unknown in obedience to God. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. He trusted that God would protect and guide him. God showed his faithfulness by protecting Abraham. Look at all the stuff Abraham run into. Robbers, thieves, they took Lot and everything Lot had and run off with it. He had to go fetch them back. He granted Abraham victory in battle and provided for his every need. That's Genesis 14, 14 through 20. When God promised innumerable descendants, Abraham took him at his word. The word, that's a capital W-O-R-D. As a result, God declared him righteous. See, ain't none of us got no righteousness. The only righteousness that we have is what is imputed to us through the blood of Jesus Christ. But you have to believe. Our faith has been, uh, no, excuse me. Uh, faith has been has been defined as a blind belief without any evidence. And it's had been stated it's better to trust someone with a proven track record. The point was that it was foolish to trust somebody that was unproven in key moments. You know, it'd be better to give somebody that had a good track record of success whatever, you know. But we have to disagree with this definition of faith because it was it's completely backwards. Faith is not blind. We place our faith in God because he is worthy of our trust. God never fails. He ain't never. If you read in the Bible and God said, I will, it's done. It's wrote in stone. If he said, I will, you can take it to the bank. Uh, he never makes a promise he cannot keep. If God said it, he will do it. Faith, then, is trusting God because we know that he is most worthy of our trust. He is trustworthy. He is the most trust. He puts the trust in trustworthy. God promised to give Abraham a son and make him a father of many nations. That's in Genesis 15 and then Genesis 17, all through Genesis. Abraham's faith followed him to wait. Excuse me. Abraham's faith allowed him to wait patiently for the promise of God. Do you think about it? Abraham was 75 years old when God told him to leave his home. He was 100 years old when Isaac was born. That's in Genesis 12, 4 and 21, 5. During this period, Abraham never abandoned his faith in God. True faith is able to endure the test of time and trial. Abraham had to trust God's word in spite of a bleak outlook. Now, just because you can't see don't mean it ain't going to happen. See, that's what faith's all about. He was old, his wife was old and bad. But his faith allowed him to trust God in spite of what he saw. The obstacles we face are both visible and tangible. We can see, hear, and touch them. Although God is invisible, he is more real than what we can see. By faith, we believe that we, we, we see what we believe that what we see was created by him who is unseen Hebrews 11:3 Like Abraham we have to trust God in spite of what we see 
By faith, we believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. I don't just believe it, I know it. You know, in fact, one of Jesus' own disciples refused to believe until he saw Jesus alive. What did Jesus say? Jesus pronounced a blessing on all who would believe without seeing. John 20, 29. You know, as Christians, we have not seen the resurrected Jesus, but by faith we accept the Bible's testimony. You start at Genesis 1, 1 and go to Revelation 22, 22. I think that's what it goes to. Anyway, from the front all the way to the back. Every word is true. Ultimately, faith is what connects the people of God throughout both Testaments. We are all made righteous through faith. Romans 4, 5, and 8. 5 through 8, excuse me. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is the means of salvation to all who believe. 1, 16. The faith of those in the Old Testament look forward to the cross. Our New Testament faith looks back toward the cross. It is the centerpiece of our salvation history. There ain't but one way to, to, to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. Now, they, a lot of people stand on a lot of street cars beating drums and singing songs and saying, you can go this way or you can go that way, but we know as Christians you only got one way. On the first Easter morning, some women went to the tomb expecting to find the body of Jesus. He had told them on several occasions exactly what would happen. In Matthew 16 and Matthew 17, he told them exactly what happened, but they, they did not understand. Jesus often used powerful parables and metaphors in his teaching. You know, most likely them women thought he was speaking metaphorically again. The angels reminded them of Jesus' words. He would die and rise again. Jesus was faithful to his promise. Then they remembered and finally understood. We read in Luke 24, 10, these women had the honor of being the first to testify that Jesus had risen. The sacrificial death and, and, and bodily resurrection of Jesus was the most important teachings in our Christian faith. They feel the promise that Abraham would be the father of, uh, of all who believe. When Jesus died, the veil of the temple was miraculously, miraculously torn in two. Matthew 27, 50 and 51. This event symbolized that all people now had access into God's holy presence through the faith in Christ's sacrifice. See, we don't need to find no priest to go in and make no sacrifice to atone for our sins. All you got to do is sit in daddy's lap and talk to him. Jesus' resurrection proved that he is the Son of God. They've been trying to stamp it out for 2,000 years, and it's still going strong. You know, without the resurrection, God's promise to Abraham would have become void. No one's sins would have been paid for. And our faith would be useless. Because God raised Jesus from the dead, we trust that he will also raise us up on the last day. After his resurrection, Jesus promised to prepare a place for us in John 14, 1 through 3. We know that God keeps his promises. Remember what I said about I will? When God says I will, it's in stone. The resurrection of Jesus verifies that our salvation is fully confirmed by God himself. It's like God said, you know, it's like God said, 
uh, I swear by myself. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is the foundation of biblical Christianity. Today we have many churches and denominations. There are different opinions on a number of topics. Issues such as music style, order of worship, and the exercise of spiritual gifts <clears throat> vary among genuine believers. These issues are negotiable and debatable, but they should not impair our unity in Christ. If all we have for all our differences, if all we have in common is Jesus Christ, it's more than enough. Remember, he wrote the book. The sacrificial death and the bodily resurrection of Jesus are non-negotiable and essential to our faith. By faith, we accept the resurrection as a real historic event. Jesus lived, died for our sins, and rose bodily from the dead. These events started the church and confirmed God's promise, salvation, uh, God's promise to Abraham. People from every nation now have access to God's salvation through faith in Christ. Easter is probably the most important day in our faith. Now I know all the kids get excited about Christmas because that's the birth of Jesus. And it is, it was a good thing. But the fact that he took on our sins and went to the cross. They didn't knock him in the head and make him get up on the cross. He laid down his life and said, I'm going to do this for all mankind. All they have to do is have faith in the fact that I've done it and believe. I hope you believe today. I hope your faith is in action. Lord God, we thank you for your salvation. We thank you, Lord, that you did die on the cross and rose the next, rose the third day. We thank you, Lord God, that you are who you say you are, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord God, we pray on this Easter that there would just be more souls come to the kingdom. Let this word find good ground let your word find good ground let me plant seeds that somebody will pick up and take the heart lord jesus we just thank you amen amen and amen